Hi guys, it's Sheena from Teton Raptor Center and I'm here to give you all this week's patient update. So let's go ahead and get started. To kick things off this week on a high note are two releases. This first one is Red-Tailed Hawk 525 flying back in the wild. This bird was here for almost an entire year and here he is back in the wild in Jackson, Wyoming on a beautiful snowy day. We did release this bird with a transmitter on his body so that we can track his movement over time and ensure that he's thriving and surviving out in the wild with that eye injury that he sustained. First up for our current patients this week is Great Horned Owl 411, and this bird was found in Gillette, Wyoming with significant trauma and soft tissue damage to the left wing and left side of the body. Um, when we got the bird in, we noticed that that whole area was completely bruised and there was some open wounds in that area as well. Um, additionally, this bird has ruptured air sacs. For those of you that don't know, Birds have a slightly different respiration system than us. And by slightly different, I mean completely different. And so they actually have air sacs located throughout their body. And sometimes during trauma incidents, those air sacs can rupture. So think of an airbag in your car. When you crash your car, the airbag inflates. And so those air sacs can inflate on a bird after sustaining trauma to the body. So those air sacs have ruptured and that's something that we can treat here. Um, unfortunately, there's also an infection going on within those air sacs. So not only are we dealing with the ruptured air sacs, but we're currently treating him with a series of antibiotics um, for the infection within those air sacs. And we're hoping that soon that soft tissue damage swelling will go down. In the meantime, this bird is in a wing wrap to keep him comfortable and he is eating really well in the ICU. Next up, we have Sharp Shin Hawk 331. This bird flew into a window and was found exhibiting severe neurological symptoms. He also is dealing with a corneal ulcer on his right eye from flying into that window. Um, we are treating him with medicated eye drops three times a day, and he was examined by our avian ophthalmologist, Dr. Lorimer. Um, and then also because of those neurological symptoms, he is still residing in our oxygen controlled ICU unit. And we are seeing an improvement with those neurological symptoms. However, um, we're not quite out of the woods yet with this one. Here we have Great Horned Owl 328. This bird was found emaciated in Salmon, Idaho, and he's working on gaining weight. He's actually getting two meals per day. And once he's at a healthy weight again, we're gonna start flight conditioning and live prey testing him. Next up is Merlin 39. This is the Merlin that had a luxated, also known as dislocated elbow. And this Merlin is doing fantastic. We are currently flight conditioning him. He moved into a larger space on Friday and he's also getting live prey tested. We think he's really close to release. And the really cool thing about this particular case is that um, Dislocated elbows are a really tricky injury to treat and um, to be able to release a bird with. Um, however, we really do think that this will be our first bird that gets released that has come in with a dislocated elbow. So that would be a really exciting feat for Teton Raptor Center. Here we have Red-Tailed Hawk 221. This bird actually just moved into the flight barn with Red-Tailed Hawk 210 on Friday. And we're hopeful that after this surgical fracture repair that she can still fly and maintain strong symmetrical flight. Here is a video of her flying in the flight barn for the first time after her surgery. Up next is Bald Eagle 210, and this bird is getting her bandage changed on her beak about every three days. The wound underneath is healing up quite nicely, but remember this bird actually came in due to a humerus fracture, and we did not do surgery on it um, since it was so close to the joint. Instead, the bird was in a wing wrap for six weeks, and we're hopeful that um, now that it's completely healed that she'll be uh, able to fly. Here's a close-up of the wound that is currently on her sear. The sear is the area of the beak where the keratin, the tough part of the beak, meets the softer part of the beak. Next, we have Golden Eagle 29, and this bird is undergoing flight conditioning on a creance line that's connected to his feet. 
The reason that we're not conditioning him in the flight barn is because he's just so big and this bird just needs more room. So the flight barn, although it's massive, it is not quite big enough for a golden eagle to sustain full blown flight. Here we have Great Horned Owl 130, and this bird is looking really good in the flight barn. We have started live prey testing, and we think that this bird has passed two times so far. Hopefully the mouse is not escaping, but here he is flying in the flight barn, really nice, long, well-sustained flight. Here we have Great Horned Owl 1112. This is the bird that we are uh, flying in the flight barn at the moment. He's actually standing on the ground after flight training, and this is a defensive posture that birds sometimes make. And this bird is currently doing that defensive posture. Basically, they try and make themselves look really big. So they take their wings and they push them out to the sides of their body to make themselves look really large and scary to ward off uh, potential predators. And since these birds view us humans as predators, this is commonly a position that we see them take um, when they are vulnerable and on the ground. Last but not least is our golden girl. This is Golden Eagle 4-2 and this adult female is awaiting her transfer approval from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. She is doing well and we hope to get her out the door soon. Thanks so much for tuning in this week. I hope you enjoyed learning more about our birds and I look forward to talking with you all next week. To check out our website, you can go to www.tetonraptorcenter.org to help keep wild birds wild by making a donation. Okay, I'll talk to you next week. Bye!